In Karl Marx's view of society, conflict between social groups is inevitable for one important reason. Resources are limited. Those who have access to society's scarce resources have every incentive to deny them to those who do not. This, in a nutshell, is the conflict theory in sociology. This theory is most commonly associated with the philosophy of Karl Marx, who is sometimes referred to as the father of sociological conflict theory. Marx famously summed up conflict theory like this. The history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. Marx was, primarily, focused on capitalism as a class struggle. According to Marx, capitalism inherently involves the oppression of the workers by the capitalist class that controls the resources. We still see this conflict playing out today. Whenever there are fights between unions and employers or internal social conflicts between the popular masses and corrupt oligarchs, Marx's idea that the world is fundamentally defined by conflict over resources replays itself in real life. At its core, conflict theory explains why societies tend to be stratified into two competing groups, people with power and people without power. Societies have achieved social stratification by creating social categories such as caste systems or other institutional and social measures that sustain the power of the dominant group to access control of resources and deny access to those resources to the subjugating groups. Conflict theory is not a single unified theory, but rather an umbrella term used for a variety of perspectives, all of which share three underlying assumptions in common. Firstly, humans are rational beings acting to maximize their self-interest. Secondly, the resources which humans seek are limited. And thirdly, the pursuit of scarce resources by rational, self-interested actors will necessarily lead to conflict. Conflict theory stands in stark contrast to the consensus theories in sociology, in particular, functionalism, which, while agreeing to the first two propositions stated here, differs on the third. This is to say, functionalism believes that a division of scarce resources among rational, self-interested actors can also be arrived at through a mutually beneficial agreement rather than through conflict alone. Unlike conflict theory, functionalism posits that social change needs to take place through incremental, calm and safe institutional change rather than conflict. While Marx's conflict theory was initially limited to a critique of capitalism and the distribution of money between the owners of capital and the working class, subsequent scholars have found the theory beneficial for exploring how society divides itself along other social categories. C. Wright Mills, for example, used conflict theory to explain the formation of power elites in society. The power elites, according to Mills, were the people in a society who had near unlimited access to the state and its resources. For example, the elite tend to have access to lawmakers who pass laws in their interests. By contrast, the ordinary citizen is powerless in the face of the power elites who can manipulate state power to their end. Similarly, some but not all feminists use conflict theory to argue that human history has been a conflict between men and women for resources, whereby men have continued to withhold access to limited resources from women. For example, up until the early 20th century, many Western societies denied women the right to own property or to vote. From a feminist conflict theory perspective, the only way that equal rights for women would be achieved is through conflict rather than incremental change. Earlier, I mentioned that functionalism offers an alternative view of society to conflict theory. To get a full picture of these competing perspectives, it's worthwhile watching this video on functionalism that's on screen now.